Hey crew, this is Mark Hatmaker walking away from you here right now. I've got the chef, chef Paul Molnar right here. Uh, we were doing, uh, uh, I think in a recent clip we talked about with uh, Headhunter, the banker, we did a, uh, a, a chin hook against uh, the fence, the stockade, set, park car, what have you. On the way out there, if you're not finishing from there, usually what's happening is you're lifting up, you're failing to put your hips through it. Or they can try and duck out the head side because that's not a bad move to make. But make sure we understand uh, what we do about that. So go ahead and get there. Now, we did the house before. I'm going to leave all that stuff out. I'm going to wait to get position. I'm going to have my underhook here. I'll be overhooking the head, underhooking the forearm. What I'm saying is I have screwed up somehow, and I failed to get my hips right. I've elevated him. And he starts wanting to go this direction. When he goes this direction, he's going to create this separation. And I want to obviously put him on the map. But I don't want to get my legs entangled in anything like that. I'm going to make my life easy. So I want to make the drop easy. As Paul has said before, where the head goes, the body will fall, which is absolutely true. So it's just not me guiding him dropping this and elevating this side because this isn't good enough because Paul can pull down on this arm, pull that arm from well, there you go, and start pulling that across. And sure, we can get to that more of me using my strength against his strength. That's not a good idea because I'm an elderly man. I'm frail and fragile. The bones of real osteoarthritis, <laughs> arthritis and all that noise. So, I want things to be on my side competitive advantage. So I take this hand, it's got the underhook, you see that? And I reach uh, Paul's far pocket right here. See if he's got any change. Now pull through that. Yeah, now go because I don't have to use strength anymore because I have like, my humerus radius and all up here. He's pulling through my skeleton. Now, until the skeleton gets so brittle that he can't withstand such pressures, we're good to go. All right, so to make Paul fall down for me to reach for that far pocket right here, I just have to back step with my right foot and kind of decrease the elevation of his head. This arm's doing nothing. It's just relaxing and hanging out. There's the drop. Now once he's down here, I know I got my butt to you. Once he's down here, drop, I'm hanging on tight. Take a sit out. And there's the pull on the head. Somebody put you there, Paul. Somebody asked, are you holding on to the chin? Like a cow catcher grip? You can. Don't have to. I prefer running all the way across. Just using a throat cutter grip, running the thumb up nice and tight. Why the throat cutter grip? You start fishing for the chin, you start tunneling cognitively in the chin, you start looking for it all the time. You don't have to have it. If you just pull this tight, this will pull out. And if they turn their head, the chin falls in your hand, and then you've got that chin hook grip magically right where you want it. So, put those two clips together, and you should be able to pull that tap off at 90 percent or push it against the stock heavy wall. And failing that, you get the drop down from there. And let's say when you got down there, there was so much sweat, and there was a, a, a huge circumference and some, some big shoulder guy, and you're going to go, well, what do I do next? Well, that's for another day. Not right now. So here comes the thumb, ladies and gentlemen.